Okay. Morning, Freya. She wants this. All right, so we're getting a little bit of a late start today because it was rainy and apparently we don't like to do any work when it's rainy, but we have to. Girls ready for some food? You're hungry for some treats? Go. It's super rainy today. Uh, it's super wet today because we've been getting a lot of rain, so um, hopefully their little feet are okay, but they've got a lot of dry area over there. Okay, so Ian built this this past weekend. Thank you, Fly. <laughs> Ian built this this past weekend, um, and it's obviously it's gonna hold some of our firewood, but um, we're gonna keep our chicken stuff over here too. So hopefully it'll be a little more organized. Okay, so this is where we're gonna grow some melon, some acorn squash, um, and we're gonna have a trellis going up in the middle here. Still not really sure what it's gonna look like, but um, we're gonna try and save some space there. So this is my cold weather crop area. Right here we have some peas, we have some kale, and we are gonna have Swiss chard over here. This is my first year planting directly in the ground and nothing has germinated y yet. Actually, these are baby kales. Honestly, like I think it took four weeks to germinate. Let's check on the Swiss shard. What? Are you getting muddy? These are just some um, junipers that were planted in the ground and re I repotted them. Those junipers are doing pretty darn great in pots. They've been in pots for about two years. All right, so these seedlings, um, haven't been outside for a couple days, so we, they're happy to be in the sun. We've got all our herbs over here. Um, I'm doing some Persian crest. We've got some flowers going here. Honestly, I don't even remember what these are. These are some melons that need to be repotted. So I'm gonna put those in some cups today and probably the tomatoes too, because you can see that their roots are starting to need some place to go. And then these are peppers. And that's some sweet Annie and some amaranth. And these are all just zinnia and cosmos, I believe. Over here we have our anemones. Um, they're coming up pretty good. I have never grown anemones before. I've basically never even grown flowers before. So there's definitely gonna be a lot of trial and error here, but um, I'm not really sure. I planted a few corms per hole. And I'm guessing I'm supposed to thin them out since a few of them have multiple sprouts. Um, I don't want to. I hate thinning plants. Oh, what's up, little mama? All right, so come up to the coop here. Hi, Reptar. Hi, Tartar. Hi, Tartar. And you can see she gets food all over her face all the time. That's pretty standard. I don't know why we're fussy, but we're fussy today, apparently. What's the deal, ma'am? What's on your face? I know why she's so dirty, because I gave her the curry from our dinner, so that makes sense. Okay, this is probably not the prettiest spot, but I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my crusty chicken reptar. Um, Reptar had a crooked face as a chick. We didn't know she had actual cross beak until much later on. You are so messy. She smells so strong like curry. <laughs> and if you've watched some of our other videos about the chicken development, um, you can kind of see over time how her cross beak worsened. So um, she can still eat. I know that some cross beak is so bad that they can't eat and those ones are unfortunately um, unsalvageable, but we definitely wanted to give her the chance to fight from the very beginning and um, she wanted to live and she actually is our biggest chicken and she lays the biggest eggs by like, I mean she is double or triple the size of some of the other eggs. So we're definitely glad we kept her. She's also a consistent layer, so um, if you're wondering if cross beak is going to make your chicken not lay, I don't think, unless they can't eat, I don't think it's a factor. She's our biggest one and probably our best layer too. So unfortunately, a few days ago, we suffered our first predator attack on our chickens. 
Not really ready to talk about it, but um, it was pretty bad and we lost two very special girls and two others were um, pretty badly injured. It actually wasn't that bad because sometimes the predator attacks will leave chickens bloody and missing limbs, but fortunately our girls, um, one of them just got her tail pulled off and the other one was bruised pretty badly, but um, it's about a week and a half later and she's still okay. Yeah, you are helping her, aren't you? So one of the things that you're supposed to do, even if you have a chicken who's not very injured, maybe they just have some skin showing, the other chickens can still do a lot of damage to them because if they see blood, they're gonna peck at it and they're gonna make whatever was injured a lot worse. So one of the first things you have to do if you have a semi-injured chicken or a sick chicken is to separate them from the rest of the flock, right? This can be kind of a problem because chickens are extremely social animals and if you've ever had a chicken separated from their flock, you know that they pretty much do everything they can to get back with their buddies. So what do you do when you have a chicken who may be on the edge of fighting for life or just giving up? Well, that's where your crossweek chicken comes in. Reptar keeps our chickens company when they're in solitary confinement because she can't peck at their wounds. She's like, I can't. So even when she pecks at the ground, she just kind of misses. I don't know if it hurts the top of her beak when she hits things or what, but um, she just sort of misses. So I've never even seen her try and peck at wounds before, but we put her with our injured chickens because she can't make their injuries worse and then at least they feel like they're not alone. You know, especially after suffering something as traumatic as a predator attack, um, I think it's very important for chickens to have another chicken around them. But I love having a crossbeak chicken because if we have a sick chicken, we just have a little bit bigger of a pen and then Reptar keeps them good company. She also loves being held. There have been a couple times when we had to feed her oatmeal um, because one time we didn't trim her beak and um, I'll get to that in a second, but she broke off the tip of her beak to the point where it was bleeding. So we had her inside for a couple days and we were feeding her oatmeal. So because of all the special care she gets, she's way more like a cat than a chicken. She really loves to be held and she'll walk right up to you when she's called. The only other thing I'll add is she did get like part of her tongue bit off. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you know, chickens just peck at whatever they see that's interesting. And somebody found Reptar's tongue interesting and they did did bite part of it off. So awful, but she's okay. So a little bit on crossbait chicken upkeep. Um, you know, Reptar, we just have to be careful making sure that she has access to food and water that doesn't require pecking. So we used to have a nipple drinker system, which I love. Um, now we do have to keep like a pooling drinker system as well because she just can't use the nipple drinkers very well. We do have a wall feeder with a scratch guard and the first time she was pecking in the scratch guard because her beak hooks at the end, she would actually get it caught and she would scream. Um, and we kind of had to help her figure out that she could only peck in the corner. I know it sounds crazy, but really they're, they're not totally stupid little guys and um, they do have a sense of self-preservation. So she pretty much only eats against the wall of our feeder because it doesn't have wires that'll surprise her. But you know, like I said, it's just a little bit of extra care in the beginning, but ever since she got over the first difficulties of having Crossbeak, she really does take care of herself. <laughs> You're so cute with food all over your face. So chicken's beaks do grow constantly, so um, we do have to trim her beak every once in a while. We don't clip it because honestly, I'm too scared to clip it. Um, too short. I've done that too many times with dog nail dog's nails. So what we do to trim her beak is we actually use a Dremel and we turn her upside down and we Dremel down the both the top and the bottom. It's not the prettiest sight. There's like a really weird smell, <laughs> but she never screams. She never cries. She's perfectly fine afterwards. In fact, she does a lot of struggling when we're turning her upside down. But as soon as the Dremel hits her beak and starts going, she like holds perfectly still. So. Um, I don't know, it probably like rattles her head a little bit maybe, I'm not sure, but it's well worth it. We only trim her beak, I think probably about once a month, um, and it's about due for another trim, so we'll try and get that on video for you too. She's like, oh no, oh my. Also the other nice thing about crossbeak chickens is they can't peck you in the eye. <laughs> no seriously, we've all been pecked in the eye before, right, because multiple times. <laughs> You're so cute. What's that reflection, huh? What's that reflection? 
Oh my gosh, Mabel's gone. Now Deli's here. We're never gonna get any eggs today. We have the new ladies. Hi. Hey, stinky poopers. Okay, so we got um, three black copper morans and three, or I'm sorry, two olive eggers. I think this is one of the little olive eggers here. And then the black copper morans have these little feathers on their feet, which are so freaking cute. Some have more than others. I'm really, 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 really hoping they're all girls because we can't have bruise. Like many people, 